Hi everyone, in this video I'll be showing you how to create a double sided finish on a carbon fiber piece, so a glossy side on both sides. If you always want to be up to date with new videos, don't forget to smash that subscribe button and hit that bell button as well to get notifications when new videos are being uploaded. If you want to support me, the best way is giving this video a like. In this video I'll show you one of the way, ways of making a double sided finish on a carbon fiber piece. So there are many options available, some are more expensive like using hydraulic presses and pre prick that's like when you order some sheets of double sided finish carbon fiber on easy composites for example, they will be made by using pre prick and hydraulic presses with heated plates. I'll be showing you how you can do it with a very good finish uh, using the resin infusion technique first to create both good sides uh, of the finish. So you could also do it with a hand layup, uh, but I've chosen to use resin infusion for the best results. So there are more expensive and more easy ways to do it, uh, but this is how I did it. So the infusion was done, so I've just used some cr scrap pieces that I had left to make uh, two plates. So one is full carbon fiber, it's a 6K uh, 215 gram square meter um, carbon fiber and the other one is done with scraps that I had from uh, carbon fiber and aramid fiber, so also known as Kevlar and the other is Alutex. As you can see in these shots, uh, I was quite surprised how hard it was to remove the peel ply from these sheets. So for me it's still a mystery, if you have uh, encountered the same problems let me know below. But um, the finish, like the peel ply on the carbon fiber piece and the Alutex and Kevlar piece are exactly the same. So I was struggling to remove it with the infusion mesh um, and I still don't know why. Maybe it's the posture that was too elevated uh, causing the infusion mesh like to melt or something. Uh, but I've just included it because not everything you do in, with composites will always be the easy way. So that's why I included this little failure. I, he I even had to use a sh uh, chisel just to have points to, to grab on to remove all the, the peel ply because it was just tearing apart in small bits but I was able to uh, remove everything. So these are the results, so this is the Kevlar and carbon fiber, so it's a very, I think it's, it's very good looking uh, and a special finish on pieces and this is the Alutex, so I still don't, didn't find the purpose to use these, so if you have like a great idea let me know in the comments below. Uh, what I could do with, with these two sheets. So here is the carbon fiber um, finish. I think it was half a meter on half a meter, so uh, a fourth of a square meter. And I'm just tracing the sides, like squared, the entire piece. Because keep in mind, even if you cut like a sheet of 15 on 50 on 50 and you infuse it, there will still be a little bit of warp along the edges. So you will never have like a perfect square piece coming out of the mold. So that's why I square it first and here's a trick if you measure the two diagonals and they're the same uh, dimension you should be pretty sure that you have a square uh, to start with. So I just trace it with a razor blade and it leaves like a little white mark you can see here in these shots. So the next part would be trimming the edges. So I'm using a Dremel with a permagrid uh, rotary tool and it works perfectly to cut through uh, small sheets of carbon fiber. If you're going for more uh, heavy work, you could also use an angler grinder and uh, get the same results. But it's a bit more um, difficult to get like the sharp and the precise uh, measurements. So after trimming, I'm using the Easy Composites uh, cleaner. So it's uh, the mold cleaner and it just you're able to remove all the dust and all uh, residues that you still have on your parts because I don't want to have to contamination with like oils and such to prevent the two sides from bonding to each other. So I had a piece of biaxial uh, carbon fiber, so it's a 300 and it's woven in a minus 45 and plus 45 degrees angle and it will like improve the um, 
like the effects on torsion of on the plate so this is an added bonus but you could also use fiberglass or um, like a twill or a plane weave so the plane weave will be woven in a 0 90 degrees and by adding this by actual you can also add strength on torsion so uh, just to get like a nice and stiff plate so we're preparing everything before doing the laminating just to be sure that you don't lose time uh, fixing these problems after you have the resin on so i'm just using the same glass plate and applying some tacky tape all along the edge and then i'll be able to prepare the bag on top but <laughs> keep in mind don't close the bag yet i'm just preparing it on one side so i just have to lift it uh, when the entire plate is laminated and glued together so I'm just using a, a regular vacuum bagging film. This is a translucent one, so it's not the green one from Easy Composites. It's just that I can buy these on a, on a roll of 50 centimeters, and it's just easier to work with than the uh, one meter 50, I think, in width of the, uh, the green bagging film from Easy, Easy Composites. So I'm just make a, make a small cut, so I've used like a V shape to cut it out, and if you unfold it you get a square and by doing that I can uh, connect the true connector onto the, the plate on the inside and then I'm just preparing the stack with the breeder also called bleeder in some um, some books or sometimes online um, and you have a perforated release film under it so um, you have small little holes into that film and the resin, the excess resin can be sucked through or the air is still left, uh, left under it. What I'm using here is something just to protect the, the good side. So I'm, I was happy with the finish and I didn't want to do some sanding after it. So I'm using some, <laughs> like they, they have some cool names for it. I think it's nanotechnologic, no self glue. You know what I mean, so special names, but it's just something that won't leave uh, glue residue. And you will mostly find it on your, um, if you buy a new TV, uh, it's like the film that you peel off. So I'm using the laminating epoxy here. So you don't often see me use the laminating resin because I mostly do uh, resin infusions. But this is the laminating resin that is a bit more uh, texotropic, so it's thicker. And I'm using the fast hardener because I know that I have plenty of time just to apply it on that one sheet. Uh, and you should have around 30 minutes of pot life. So uh, that's why you have to be fast. Uh, don't lose time. Like if you still have to cut the piece or something, just make sure that everything is prepared before you start um, applying the resin and mixing the resin. So I'm using a bag just to make like a little, um, like a little sheet I can fold it in. And I'm just applying the resin on it and then I just squeegee it off and then I even close it back and like pull a bit more resin out of the, uh, the laminate. So like I said, you could also do this with uh, fiberglass or a plain weave. So you can choose whatever you want, but I prefer to have an extra layer uh, bonding the two sides together. Um, like how do you know how much resin you have to mix like mostly it would be experience or you could also weigh the fabric and you, if normally you should have like in a wet layup 50 on 50 in uh, ratio so that would mean if you have a 300 grams uh, of fibers you will also need 300 grams so i think i've mixed 200 but also used it for another project but i think like 50 or 60 gram should be enough so I'm just applying the first layer on top, then I can flip the entire part in the bag. So the bag is very useful to keep everything clean and um, well organized. So I'm just um, applying a bit more pressure on the fabric and then I'm just sandwiching the two sides with the peel ply finish. So the peel ply is very important because you get a good finish to bond on without having to sand the uh, carbon fiber in. Uh, and epoxy resin on the back. So everything is put into the bag now. So this is only a true back connector, but keep in mind that I still have a lot of pleader just in case resin would seep through because this is not a connector that you would use to get resin going through. Otherwise you could use the silicon connectors 
Um, but I also made a video about that connector. Uh, you can check it out in the description below or something somewhere right on top of, of this video. So everything is being sucked together with the vacuum, then everything is left overnight. I think I even left the part for uh, three days. Normally the resin cures after four hours, so if you're in a hurry you can do it in four hours. But I've just waited long enough because it was during the weekend and um, that's mostly when I do my, my resin parts on a Friday so I don't in a rush to remove everything. So. The green film is removed. Uh, first time I've used it, so I'm pretty happy with it just to, to save the parts from scratches and so on. And then I'm just like using the permagrit block just to sand off all the excess resin and just a little bit of carbon that was sticking out. So this is the finish. So uh, perfect grade eight finish, uh, grade A finish on both sides. And if you have more questions, put them in the like comment section down below don't forget to hit that like button and see you in the next video thanks for watching